I'm Will Sampson from FDMC Magazine and the Woodworking Network. We're in the shop today to talk about tape measures. It's kind of a ubiquitous tool that's in most of our shops. Um, and I got uh, a sample sent to me from the folks at Milwaukee of their new heavy duty Milwaukee stud tape measure. Who thinks of the names of these things? Uh, it's a 25 foot tape measure, uh, generally targeted for construction work, and it made me think about some of the issues with tape measures and what are the features you need to look for. And most of our audience are shop-based woodworkers, and they are looking for something different than a tape measure than some of the construction tape measures. Uh, but there are some basic issues to think about. Uh, one of the, the most common things that all the tape measures seem to talk about is stand out. How far will their tape measure go out before it collapses? Now this Milwaukee stud claims about 10 feet and this is a uh, Fat Max from Stanley. It's a little wider and it claims about 12 feet. And then some of these smaller tapes, I just gathered all together a bunch of tapes found around the place. Here's a little teeny tape that is only 10 feet long and it doesn't stand out very far at all. But the really the, the thing about standout is it's a function of the width of the tape measure. You know, this, this little tape measure is only about three eighths of an inch wide and the Stanley Fat max is more than an inch wide. So if you're really concerned about standout, look for wider tapes. That's really all there is to it. It's a matter of physics. You're not going to make it stand out farther uh, unless you make it more rigid and that usually means making it a wider tape. Now most of the tapes for construction are around the 25 foot range like this Milwaukee. But how often do you need 25 feet in a woodworking shop situation? I gravitate toward the 15, 16 foot tapes. Those seem to be about all you need for a woodworking situation. They stand out about eight or nine feet depending on the tape measure. That's plenty for most of what we need. Um, and then there are other features. The most common issue is how does the tape lock out? You know, this Milwaukee has a mechanical lock on it. And I'm going to zoom in so we can look at, a little closer at some of these features. Now it's just a mechanical lock there. But it also has an interesting feature down underneath here. There's a recess for your finger so that you can hold it out with your finger. Now some of the other tapes, um, such as uh, this tape from FastCap, it has a button down there that does the same, th same thing. And you push it and it holds it out. One of the things that's important on the tape measures is that you do try and slow the retraction in by using your finger um, either on the button like that or, or just out like that because that protects an important part of the tape which is the tang. Now a lot of people don't realize that the tang is loose for a reason that's for inside and outside measurements. I've, I've met actual neophytes and heard all sorts of shop stories about people who tried to repair the tang by peening these rivets and making it so it doesn't move. Well, that'll make it inaccurate because it's supposed to move exactly the thickness of the tang so that you can do inside and outside measurements with it. Another feature of uh, different tape measures is a simple thing like a belt hook. Now a belt hook is very handy, but I'm surprised that most of the, the tape measure 
manufacturers, particularly the big construction tape ones, they just have a hook that you have to, it's really strong and it holds great if you can get the darn thing on your belt. The folks at FastCap and uh, Hefla, which I think they license FastCap's design to Hefla, they have a very neat feature that's a lever on the top of the clip. So it makes it easy to one-handed open the clip up and slide it onto your belt. Works really good. Another thing that you'll find in tapes is some differences in the tape itself. You know, these construction tapes tend to be all English measurement all the time, all inches. And, you know, they come in yellow, or there's tapes that are white. Um, you know, the, there are tapes that my favorite type are with I'm zooming just a little bit more so you can see. With inches on top and metric on the bottom so that I can do both. You know, a lot of shops these days with 32 millimeter system are set up for metric only, and they could get metric only tapes too, but they're not as easily found. Um, the folks at FastCap have um, all sorts of interesting tape deals. Here is one. You know, most of the tapes that you see are curved, like, like that, okay? But that makes it harder to use them on a uh, flat surface. And the folks at uh, FastCap actually produce a tape that it has no standout. It's all flat, and it's great for measuring on flat surfaces like sheet goods and it lies flat and you can use it. Another great feature on tape measures that I really like that again is was one pioneered by by FastCap is that they have a flat white side on the tape that you can write measurements on and then uh, you can just wipe off the measurement. Real handy. So you don't lose that measurement between when you uh, took it and when you take it to the saw to cut it. The one thing that you can't tell about tapes really is how durable they're going to be. And they you know, that, that you got to take it apart and figure it out. The Milwaukee claims that their tape survives an 80-foot drop. Well, I'm not going to have an 80-foot drop in my shop, but I'll probably drop it, you know, three feet half a dozen times in the course of an operation. So it is important that they have some kind of armoring, and most tapes these days have a rubber armoring on them so that they can work. Uh, we talked about locking mechanisms. There is another locking mechanism that I don't have a sample of here, which is a spring-loaded bottom lock that's kind of like this lock here with your thumb or your finger on it, but it's spring-loaded. I don't much care for those because they seem to not hold up in production, uh, in professional situations. Uh, the spring gets tired after a while and the tape won't stay out. It just goes back in by itself. What about its alternatives to tapes? You know, our friends in Europe, they don't like tape measures in a lot of the shops. They're fond of something we consider a antique, the folding rule. You know, but the folding rule, it doesn't seem to have standout problems and it stays a little straighter standing out. Um, I find it's kind of handy for doing, uh, if I'm checking the square on a box and measuring diagonals, uh, that's kind of neat. But, you know, maybe it's because I grew up using tapes. I'm much more comfortable and faster using a tape for most measurements. And I think it's as accurate as, as it needs to be for most woodworking. Um, when it comes to setting up machines and adjusting like the, the height of tooling and stuff like that, I tend to use uh, 
uh, stainless steel rules. Um, they seem to, to be more precise and they stay straight and I can do different, I have different size ones that I use or I'll actually use calipers. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a matter of your preferences. The yellow or white tape color, that's a matter of what works best for you. I kind of like the white ones. The yellow ones seem to be very popular. Um, and uh, it's personal preference as far as I can tell. Another thing to be concerned about is the accuracy of tapes. I once visited a shop that they bought new tapes every year for the shop and they would buy 10 tapes at a time and pull them all out to full length and hold them next to each other and they would pick the five that agree and then return the other five. Um, I don't, I haven't done a lot of real careful comparison of the different tapes, but uh, you know, if you're really concerned about accuracy, it might be worth checking all your tapes. Uh, certainly they stretch over time. Uh, some of the, the newer tapes, uh, like this Milwaukee, have a special coating on them to try and make that the tape last a little longer. Some of the fast caps have similar coating. Um, you know, I, I, whatever, the main thing is to, you know, try not to step on them or bend them or kink them in the wrong direction. And then they'll last as long as they're going to last for you. But it is a, a tool that's going to get abused and you're going to want to replace it every now and then. Well, that's what we've got for today. Uh, you can see more videos and tool reviews at our website, uh, woodworkingnetwork.com uh, and in the pages of FDMC magazine. Thanks for watching.